the Funny Comics Fan Club. Hello and welcome to the Funny Comics Fan Club with me, Dr Mark Hibbett. And me, squadron leader John Dredge. What ho! <laughs> Tally ho boys! Tally ho there and pip pip, don't you know? It's so convincing, I, you, I don't know why I've never picked up you a squadron leader before. I've got no squadron. That's I mean, useless being a leader with no squadron. What am I supposed to do? It doesn't say a lot for your leadership capabilities, does it? <laughs> Luckily, I've got a job here now on the Funny Comics Fan Club. The Funny Comics Fan Club. And what are we looking at today on the Funny Comics like Fan Club, squadron leader? Well, Pip Pip, we're looking at Wizard and Chips. Fantastic. In brackets, with Crazy Comic. Ah, Ooh. Exciting. What's happening there? So when, this is from 1979. All the way this. back to 1979, 9th of June. It came out every Monday for nine pence. Nine a new pence. It is a new pence. Crazy. We've checked. And uh, that was the currency at the time. And did you ever read Wisdom Chips at the time? Yeah, I used to get it in dentist waiting rooms when I went into <laughs> dentist waiting rooms. And... Uh, I used to sit there reading lots of them then. But I can't remember ever buying it. I think maybe my friend may have bought it because I remember them being... I remember the Chips comic being taken out of the Wizard comic. Right. And that must have been when I saw that, when my friend was doing it. Um, but maybe we should explain the concept of this comic. What do you think? Yeah, well, I think the idea of the comic was... So in British comics uh, throughout the 60s, 70s and indeed the 80s, they would often merge together. It was called Hatch, Match and Dispatch. Huh. Well, was they... it? What do you mean Hatch, Match and Dispatch? Oh, I'm so glad you've asked. I'm so glad you've asked. You mean there's a term for this? There's very much a term for it. Yeah, so what they do was they put a new comic out and the idea of a new comic was to get as many readers as it could. That was hatching a new comic. After a year or so, they would then match that comic with another comic that might not have been selling so well or vice versa and they put them together and then they would not then they will be dispatched so they'd hatch it out they match it with another character with another comic and get rid of it huh. and it was a whole policy whereby you go okay well we've got 100,000 kids reading this comic let's see if we can get 100,000 kids reading this comic if they don't we go fair enough we'll merge it with another one so that all the kids who read the original one now get that one and then we'll just put another one out to try and get some more kids out did that work do you think it worked quite well yeah I mean they kept doing it for a long time they must have worked but, I mean, if you look at this Wizard and Chips with Crazy comic, there's not a lot of crazy about it. There's not a lot of crazy. I mean, originally, I, mean, I think it's odd that it's got crazy... It doesn't say Wizard and Chips and Crazy. No, 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 no that's right. Yeah. But Wizard and Chips was launched as two comics. So they must have thought, oh, kids love it when you've got two comics in one. I didn't like it. I hated it when that happened. But they must have thought it was a good idea. So they launched Wizard and Chips as one comic, pretending to be two. Yeah, what a strange... Thought. It is odd, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, I mean, when you get to Chips, it says every Monday on the Chips pages because it's pretending to be a separate comic, yeah. but it doesn't have the price or anything else there. But Does yeah, it that, not? It doesn't have the no, price. No, no. That would be too confusing, I guess, wouldn't it? Because, you know, maybe a scurrilous news agent say, that's 18p if you want two of them. They would do, or they take them out. That's probably what it, like, you know, like when you buy cans of Coke and it says not to be sold separately. Yeah, something like that. That's probably why. Cra crazy Comic really died when it when, when Crazy stopped. Uh, there's like, what is it, three or four strips from Crazy? Yeah, yeah. So Crazy's been part of Wisdom Chips for, I think, about six months at this point. 1979 was sort of the midway point of the whole run of Wizard and Chips, I think, because it started in 69, ended in 90. Yeah. This is 79. So it was going for, what, 30 years, this comic? And this is kind of in the height of... I mean, the sort of comics you and I have been talking about, the sort of comics we remember, 1979, this, this period is the height of these all going. So there was loads and loads of them about, wasn't there? Yeah. And we'll have to look at many of them as we, as we go along. We will do. Right. So the thing about the two comics, Wizard Comic and Chips Comic, is that like, this guy, Sid, was in charge of the Wiz kids, the people that liked the Wizard Comic. And Shiner, this guy, Shiner was in charge of the Chipites. Chipites the, forever. The people who like the chips bit of the comic. Which was me, by the way. That was me as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, let's look at why that was. Because if you look at this today, Sid's Snake was on the cover for, uh, you know, years, I think. The concept of Sid's Snake is... It's, it's quite a, complicated, it's, so you may need to explain this slowly to people. It's a kid called Sid. Mm -hmm, right. And he has a yeah. pet snake. A giant pet snake. Yeah. 
called Slippy, I believe. Oh, he was called Slippy, wasn't he? Yeah. And that is it. That's it. And so they got 30 years out of that. Now, this has happened a few times while we've been doing this podcast. I'm sort of amazed at the amount people have got out of these very thin premises. It's a boy who has a snake. And the snake can change into different shapes and things like that a as, little bit as long as they're still a snake yeah yeah, yeah. snake like shapes very snake like shapes yeah 30 years this was <laughs> I, mean, I mean the first I mean on the page here on the front page we've got Sid he's trying his luck as a magician it must be a hobby of his apart from having a snake I mean, you need something else yeah. there was no internet in those days be fair yeah you have to keep yourself occupied so he's going for my last trick I shall make someone float in the air Someone's on the table. He says, now I remove the stools. He does that. And the bloke's floating in the air. Amazing. And then everyone in the audience is going, I wonder how he did that. And the answer is, behind the curtain, the snake was holding up the table. 30 years. 30 years. Of this. <laughs> and it's incredible. You sort of think, so these kids, <laughs> they get, well, I mean, it's like, do they not know? <laughs> yeah, they're a bit thick. What about, oh, Sid, yeah. There's something about Sid, isn't it? What is it with him? Does he collect rubber bands? Oh, it's something like that. Anyway, how is he doing this? Yeah. It's his snake, you idiots. I this is, no wonder we like chips. <laughs> uh, I mean, Sid himself is just blank as a character. Completely blank, Just yeah. bland, just nothing to it, apart from the fact that he has a pet snake. That's it. I can't imagine there were that many Wizard fans if that was the... The best whiz, of what we the whiz see. kids right, right on the, right the front, front and that's advertising it to everybody so are you stupid no. then you're like well, no I wasn't talking to you oh sorry, sorry. Yeah. sorry no. just wondering <laughs> don't, don't put me up on a charge oh ah, no, no <laughs> I won't Dr Mark but uh, at least Sid was also in charge of the whiz kids page right the letters page for the whiz kids for the followers of whizzer and for, for every item published you get a t-shirt plus one pound one pound and the jokes on this WizKids page, I found somewhat lacking. Did you indeed? This is another reason why I'm not a WizKid. <laughs> As many people have said to me over the years, they've said, you're a squadron leader, not a WizKid. Not a WizKid. But look at the, the jokes that have been sent in. I don't, think, I don't think one of them was sent in. I think one of them was made up by, a, by an editor. Really? This is the, well, you'd have to be able to back that up somewhere in a court of law. <laughs> what it says, instead of like having a, a joke and then a name at the end of it, it just says, a WCK reader. A Wizard and Chips and Crazy reader. No name. I see. I suspicious. don't think so. What is, what, is, what is this anonymous joke? Well, Hit Kid, which is a brilliant character that came from Crazy, a, a sort of boy that was a hit man in a way, saying, have you got the time? I'm invited to a party, but my watch isn't going. To which the Bitonic rep boy replies, what a pity, why wasn't it invited? That was the best joke that the editor could come up with at the time. My watch isn't... My watch isn't going, what a pity, why wasn't it invited? Just going over it again for anyone who hadn't quite worked it out. Any whiz kids listening? Yeah, yeah I think they wouldn't have worked it out, these whiz kids, if that's no, anything to go by. No, it's not What did you think of this joke page? Uh, yeah, I, 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 I'm with you on this one. It just seems... The jokes are just without much humour to them. Apart from that, they're really good. Because some of these, when we've read them, some of these comics have had good jokes. Made. Really so, good jokes. Yeah. Though. The best one here is, um, why shouldn't you go into the jungle between six and eight? I don't know. Why shouldn't you go into the jungle between six and eight? Because the elephants are having parachute practice. Do you think that was good? Listen to the follow-up. That, why? Was the, that was the end of the joke. Oh no, there's more. There's, there's more. more. There's, there's more. more. As Jimmy Cricket once said, why are crocodiles long and flat? Because they go in the jungle between 6 and 8 p.m. Is the correct answer. And that was from Jonathan Whitfield from Bolton. Write in, Jonathan, and let us know something. What? <laughs> well done, Jonathan. Yeah, that's... that's I think you know, Tony's got a two-parter there. It's He's pretty good. Not bad. Pretty Better than good. the Fleming WCK reader anonymously posting over here. Maybe that's why they were anonymous. Yeah. Gonna... The other one that I was, I was looking at is on page two. Do you want to look at that first, or do you want to go through it? Let's, let's, go, for the, let's go for the champ on page two. The Champ, right, I thought, I really like this page. But this, this is something else, isn't it? So this is by J. Edward Oliver. What do we know about him, if anything? Well, J. Edward Oliver was, well, he's famous because for all the little details he always used to put, 
Yeah, That's what I love about it. Some of the details are, are brilliant in here. He could have anyone else might have just left the background and concentrated on the action. But I love, that's what makes it good for me, is these little background details. Like the main one that sprang out at me is that they're, they're playing football on a, on a lawn and there's a sign coming out of it that says, Abolish Tuesdays. So that was something that he put in his comics quite a lot, I believe. I think the argument is that on a Monday, you're sort of fresh from the weekend, so you're ready to go. Friday is Friday, Thursday's nearly Friday, Wednesday's halfway through the week, what's the point of having a Tuesday? Is that right? That's how it goes, that, that was the argument for it. I didn't realise there was a cohesive argument behind that. Well there you go, no more cohesive than that I think. That is really good. And also he used to have these things, he, he would have a small cube that had a handle coming out of it in some pictures, have you heard of that? I, I haven't heard of it. I remember that because back when I was reading this sort of thing in 79 I remember a friend of mine saying in some of these comic strips there's a small cube with a handle coming out of it for no reason at all in the background that just stuck in my mind and I, I've actually always I've, I've done it since in cartoons of my own I've done that sort of thing so it really stuck in my head but it, there's so much clever stuff in it isn't there? there's um, I love there's a little detail in one of the panels where there's a litter bin and the litter bin's for the puppies and I was going why is that oh it's a litter of puppies a litter of puppies I see I yeah, see I yeah. see yeah. There's another little detail, there's another sign coming out of the lawn which says says something like grass cut by Lawn Green. Now Lawn Green was a, a fairly well-known actor in those days because Battlestar Galactica was probably on television at this point, which he was in. So yet another fun 70s reference. But I thought the, the story was really good for once. It's plotted out really well. There's ten panels. It's got a beginning, middle and an end. It has. And it just has some sort of satisfactory quality to it, the way it's done. It really is a step above, isn't it? Especially looking at something like, I don't want to bring this up again, Mickey the Monkey last time. I told you not to bring that up. <laughs> and that was like a huge tabloid paper with gaps in it, no story, just dreadful. This is crammed full of stuff. This crammed is so much fun. going on. It's, it's brilliant, isn't it? Yeah, it's really, really good. We love this. But yeah, we I really like the champ. And in fact, some other artists had done this character beforehand. Oh, have they? I can't remember who they are now, but um, I think Jay, Jay, what's his name? Edward Oliver did really well. Well done, Jay Edward Oliver. I think that's the yeah. only page he did in this as well, judging by his style. But it's funny, it's because I, ha- I don't think we've seen any of his stuff before. No, no. And, you get, and when you see it, it's like, oh, it's this guy. Because a lot of these, you think, oh, it's this guy. Which brings me... Brings you to... Segway. I'm going to go... This guy. I'm going to go over to the middle pages. What do you think you're doing? I'm flicking through to the companion paper to Wizard, Chips, every Monday. And we've got Shiner here. And the reason I was going over to this one, because Shiner is drawn by Mike Lacey, the same guy who drew uh, Sid Snake. Because there's nothing wrong with the actual artwork. There's, there's ne- there very rarely is, is there? I mean, very almost rarely. always the artwork looks great. And this does look pretty cool, doesn't it? You've got Shiner. I better explain. Shiner is the leader of the Chipites. And his characteristic, his main characteristic, is that he always ends up with a black army. Again, <laughs> 30 years worth of material out of that. <laughs> what, what that makes me realise is how inventive these people were in order to do that. And what I like about this page is that Shiner is having a fight with, with, with somebody... And his mum comes out and says, Oh, Shiner, don't you dare scrap with Johnny in our garden. Go somewhere else. So then he says, I know, we'll carry on our scrap in the park. Yeah. They're enjoying it. Well, they're like, they're like football hooligan crews, aren't they? Who would arrange to meet up specifically to have a fight. Yeah. Arrive at the fight and then start beating seven shades of whatever out of each other. And they're both having a good time doing it. Come on, kids. Let's get into organised violence. It's fun. Hooray. I can't see it happening now. Um, I, I don't think you'd have this story now some kids just whacking each other, no. No, I don't think that would get on CBBC these days. But what's good about it is they go in the park and immediately the parky, the parky, here he is, the iconic figure of comics, comes out and says, Oi! No scrapping in my park. So then they go into the street. Policeman says, No scrapping in the street. No scrapping anywhere. So then in the end they go, I know we, where we can carry on scrapping. The scrap yard. The scrap yard. The yard of scraps. So they carry on having a good old fight and having a nice time. A lovely time. And all the adult authority figures, so his mum, the policeman, the parky and the car park attendant. And who doesn't remember the car park attendant as an authority <laughs> figure back in those days? 
they're all watching this scrap and they can't do nothing about it. It's a scrapyard. But Shiner's contribution to this comic doesn't end there. No, he doesn't, does it? No. You look at him here in charge of Shiner's Chipites page. Now, did you prefer the jokes in Shiner's Chipite page? These were of a much higher standard. Go on, give us one then. Well, look at him. He says, um, for example, there's a limerick here for a start. I'm interested. You like a limerick? I like a limerick. There was a young lady called Wynne who dieted till very thin. She caused a cascade while she drank lemonade because she slipped through the straw and fell in. It's, it's, right. it's worth reading. That it's worth good. reading, in my opinion. I'm glad you did. And I did notice that they've got a little coupon at the end. It says, what are your favourite features? There's no mention of anything you don't like. Oh, there's not, is there? There's one, two and three of ones that you like. There's no, no chance of getting a don't like in there. Maybe they're thinking like, all oh, the kids are like, I didn't like the anonymous joke writer. Get rid of them. Yeah. <sighs> well, maybe the editors were just thinking, we don't want to put negative thoughts in these kids' minds. We'll, we'll just pretend that everything's great. They don't want to put negative thoughts. The front page of this mini-comic is two kids beating the living daylights out of each other. Yeah, but in a fun way. In a fun way. It's fun violence. It's the best kind of violence. Nothing. You know the Muppet, the, the pilot of the Muppet show is called Sex and Violence, you know that? Well, I didn't know that, no. I mean, no wonder it didn't get commissioned for several years. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, I really like the Chipites comic. You've got this star guest here, Disaster Dead's coming over from Cheeky Week. I was reading about there was, there was It's called Star Guest. So you go, oh, here's a great feature, here's a guest one. It's like, a, but you just reprinted a page from another comic, haven't you? Isn't that what's happened? Is that a reprint of, of an old strip? I don't. I've no idea, but it's like, isn't it? Wouldn't it be? Because they're not going. Let's introduce you to disaster days. I think not. Because I mean, to me, that that I thought that was like a, a form of marketing for the other for another comic. I think it is. It's I like th- here is a, a character from Cheeky Weekly. What do you think of him? I think I think it is. But also, they're going as a side result. They get a free page. Or yeah. maybe, I mean, do they, would they have paid the writer and the artist twice? I doubt it. I doubt it. <laughs> Knowing how these things work back in those days. And, you know, you'd have to be rich to get two comics a week, wouldn't you? Let's face it. You'd have to be wrong. Well, this is two comics a week. Oh, yeah. What are you talking about? Oh, yeah. Good point. I don't think any of the characters in this were rich. This is very much a working class sort of well, they were, publication. Like, if you look at Shiner's mum, Shiner's mum's got the classic I am a working class character because she's got a headscarf on. Right. Rather than Shiner's mum. Yeah, maybe that's why we like chip bites more than whiz kids because the yeah. whiz kids. Are, I, I always get the impression that whiz kids are posh. There's something in that. I think there's something in that. I think there is. We yeah. we sort of side with the underdog. We do. We do. <laughs> what else have we got? Yeah. Okay, now you're covering this page. Run, Rogan, run. I'm sure nobody in the audience has ever heard of this. Well, it's amazing. I have no memory of this. All. I mean, it doesn't really matter what it's about. There's, there's, it's a, it's an adventure strip. It's two pages. Uh, Ralph Rogan was the most promising boy athlete in Britain, but when his father was in prison for a crime, he didn't commit. What does that remind you of? That's the eighteen, isn't it? It also reminds me of the Incredible Hulk. There was a lot of it about in the 1970s. I think both of them were on the, around that time. A crime he didn't commit comes from the opening titles of the Incredible Hulk TV series to me. Is that what they say on the eighteen? That's what they say on the eighteen as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They make it very clear. Yes, they've been wrongly convicted. So that's yeah, a lot of it about in those days. According to them, I mean, I don't know. According to them, it's. Let me just look at this again. It says convicted for a crime he didn't commit. Ralph broke him out of jail. This lad's about twelve. How did he break his dad out of jail? And now must have been must have been in an athletic manner. It would have been in that. It would have involved running of some sort, wouldn't it? Or possibly a discus. Because look at him here. There's a, there's, a, there's a picture here where he's training for something. He looks like Batman or something. He does, doesn't he? It's a, mon- it's a montage, isn't it? It's, it's a, a montage classic of... training montage. Yeah, he looks like, you know, he'd be handy. He could take on Shiner, certainly. Oh, he could do for Shiner, couldn't he? Yeah, that's that. that strip would be all over if he was there. There'd be nothing <laughs> left of him. Sean, it would be called. <laughs> yeah, Shiner R.I.P. <laughs> But the reason why I talk about it, because there's this, and there's also a strip called Whiz Kids, which is another double-page adventure story. Yeah, well, it's called something Whiz Wheels. Whiz called. Wheels. But it's got a, a chap in it called Tommy Whiz Wheels. Is that his name? name? <laughs> Mr. Wheels, the common English name that we all know. Mr. and Mrs. Wheels and their son, Tommy. Mrs. Wheels, they spoke. <laughs> But the reason I want to talk is it's, it's not really, similar. They're similar. I mean, and they look not. I mean, I think these are mostly drawn by Italian, Italian or Spanish artists, so it looks great. But I have no memory whatsoever. And I, I, I got Wisdom Chips. 
I got it from I had it on the the news agents a couple of years, and I will have got it during this period. Mm. No memory at all of there ever ever been, and it's like when we looked at jackpot right at the start of all this, and that I have no memory of terror toys. No, not at all. Things. Not at all. The only one I remember is in Cheeky Weekly. They had an adventure trip called James Bold. Well, I remember the leopard from Lime Street. I was going that. But I remember that because that stood out. Because I thought, oh, this is the only adventure story, and it turns out there were loads of them. But that was a really good story. I remember. What was the What was the leopard of Lime Street in? And it was in Buster. Buster. We haven't done that yet. He was bitten by a radioactive leopard. A radioactive leopard. Just trying to think if that reminds me of anything. Um. It was, so, well, he was bitten by a radioactive <laughs> leopard and gained all the powers of a leopard. Uh, he was an orphan who lived with a relative and he made money by taking photographs of himself in action working for the local newspaper. Unlike, can't think of any, any other story. I was amazed that I didn't realise that at the time. So there's a thing called fuzzy trace theory. Here's today's educational point. What the hell is that? <laughs> For the purpose of the tape, John has just given a look of delight and a weep of joy. Fuzzy trace theory is the idea that we remember things in two different ways. We have verbatim memory, where I remember exactly something. So if I said to you, do you remember what the phone number for the multiple of swap shot was? 01589 Oh one eight double one eight zero five five. Yeah, exactly. That was it. So I've remembered the verbatim number there. I've remembered the wrong. You've actually, yeah. <laughs> That's true. So yeah, sorry. When I said there are two th- two ways, there's more than two. There are two. <laughs> there's the incorrect way. There's the verbatim <laughs> way, which is what I just demonstrated there. There's, there's the wrong way. way. Yeah, the wrong way. Yeah. And the third or second, to psychology, someone do they know, is called gist. So you remember the gist of something. So you would remember the gist of how a funny comic works, and you'd also remember verbatim how a funny comic works. But over time, uh, the verbatim memory deteriorates and the gist memory stays. So you remember the gist, you're much more likely to remember the gist of something than the actual verbatim record of it. And that gist memory changes over time. So it's like, as you go through life, you think, oh, I remember the general idea of how a funny comic works. And gradually what you think about will be the funny comics, the funny strips in it, and you'd forget. So you don't remember that these are. So it's just really weird now when we're confronted uh, with these things it's like what, what are all these adventure strips doing in here yeah it's quite weird it is weird well explained Dr Mark thank you squadron leader what I like I mean what I like about this is it's quite a good story I'm actually quite interested in, in this story there's one panel where all he is he's just in his office to, and they're just talking to each other like the, the, the trainer's talking to this kid but the camera is outside the office, looking in through the office window, and you can see these sort of shadows inside. And just all... taking what would be a, nor- a fairly sort of uninteresting picture and making it making it unusual. Yeah, and that's why these guys were hired. I mean, this is by a guy called Mario Capaldi. I think he was Spanish. He might have been Italian. But there were whole studios of these artists working out there. He did loads and loads of work. I mean, I always, whenever I see this, I think it's something like Misty. Or it's one of those sort of the girl stories always look like it's sort of very glamorous it looks fantastic doesn't it it does but I, I would never have wanted to read Misty or anything like that because I think a whole comic of this sort of thing wouldn't have appealed to me actually well Misty's too scary isn't it that was it is scary Misty. what was quite interesting was that they've got uh, a few exclamation points here slam is one sound effect that comes up in the panel and another one thump but it's slam with two M's and thump with two U's so either that's for emphasis or the writer couldn't spell and when somebody gets thumped, what do they, what exclamation do they give? Now, now. Sounds more like ET or something, doesn't it? Not really. Maybe. Well, maybe it was. We don't know. So this is in the dark. Could it? You can barely see them. Let's face it. But what do we think overall of this uh, story? I did not enjoy it. Again, as I, as I always say, it looks great. The montage scene is fantastic. But it's like, so some lad is hiding his dad in in a PE room. Or something and he's doing some athletics what is going on there were loads of athletics things on kids tv around this time it may have been a reflection of that there was a program that no one remembers called out of bounds that was a i don't remember that no it was a thing around this time and it was about a kid athlete who got kidnapped that's what it was so not not dissimilar in some not ways dissimilar. Uh, the the theme tune was actually was a bit of craft work which is scary as hell. This isn't really scary as hell, so no. let us pass on from Let us pass on to So I think our next scheduled stop <laughs> is with Fuss Pot.
Oops, I nearly forgot to put a pair of Jacko skates at the top of my Christmas present list. Super Jacko skates. Quieter, safer, longer wearing. Uh, available from all good toy shops, sport shops and stores everywhere. Well, I mean, what can I tell you about that? I mean, to me, Fussbot is an amazing character. To me, it's like as if Kenneth Williams had a daughter. Yes. <laughs> or, or Morrissey had a daughter. The, the, the result would be Fusspot, the fussiest girl around. She's amazing. I mean, in this strip, the reason I chose this is because Fusspot embarks upon a reign of terror, madness and anarchy. Right at the start, she says, Tut tut, the seats in this park are a disgrace. Look at the rubbish on this one, fuss fuss. You can hear Kenneth Williams saying that. It's a disgrace! <laughs> it's very good. That's sort of thing. Yeah. She's standing next to a parky. She's the iconic parky figure. There's another Makes parky. another appearance. Did you ever meet a parky in the 70s? Not at all. I, no. I'm sure I wouldn't have known what they were, really. I've never seen a parky in my life. I've if seen it, police it, officers, I've seen. Car park attendants, I've seen. If anyone so has any photographic evidence of a parkie from 1979, then let us know. Please do. On the socials, on any, any way you want to do it. Any way you like, let us know. D-R-E, D-G-E, H-I-B-B-E-T-T at gmail.com But she grabs the pointy stick of the parkie and stabs a homeless man in the head. <laughs> I mean, that got a laugh out of me. I don't think he should have done. No, he shouldn't have done. She stabs him in the head and he says, Yow. Yow. I, mean, I, I, yeah. I would have had more to say about it than that. Yeah. Then, then she goes and there's a seat next by and she bounces down the seat, knocks an elderly person off the seat. <laughs> great. Sorry, not great. No, bad, John. Very bad. bad. This is bad behaviour. not funny. As we'll find out, as we continue through the story, we'll find out there's a lesson to this. Let's carry on with it. So first what then carries on, she says, I'm going to go and sit on this park bench, and the parky says, don't sit there. And she says, first, first, I rem she's go she basically says, get lost. I'm not listening to you. I do as I like. <laughs> uh, oh, there's an untidy placard on it. She removes it. She sits down, and the placard says, wet paint. First pot gets stuck to the bench by the wet paint not jelly paint I assume but no because that bench doesn't exist that never existed and then all the characters before and all the adult characters appear and remonstrate with her at the end and the parky then as this is all going on the parky turns to us the audience and says ho ho that'll teach her not to be so fussy next time she parks herself in the park whoa ho ha ha he he yeah. And it's like, what? So the parky's on our side now? We like the parky, do we? This comic goes to 21 years. There's no way. She won't have learned this by next time. The next first I can't part, see it happening. Yeah, it's not going to be, hang on a minute, better not stab that homeless man in the head this time. It's not going to happen, is it? <clears throat> no, but um, a very fun character. And one that all kids could relate to, I'm sure. I'm sure we could, yes. Um, yeah, we, we love Fusspot. It's, well, I suppose, in a way, this last, pa this last panel of her being told off is kind of like in the Beanie and the Dandy. It's the, last, it's the slipper panel, isn't it? It's like saying, you've done wrong, and now you will pay the price. Yeah, 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 you have to pay the price right at the end. And as, as, a, as a story, this works quite well, I think, because it sets it up. It, it, there's, there's a law of three, so there are three occasions upon which she does wrong, and on the third occasion her own actions lead to her end so it's well well constructed yeah it's great isn't it yeah it's just a good a good character and a good story and that is something that we we do both remember i, I imagine oh we always i think everybody remembers fuss part don't everybody remembers fuss fuss part. Part. good full marks to fuss part. full marks to fuss now we're coming up to this next one <laughs> timothy tester i've never heard of this have you ever heard i've of him? never heard of timothy of course tester. you have never heard of timothy tester nobody on earth has ever heard of timothy tester which is odd because it's a great strip. It's drawn by a bloke called Cliff Brown, who we've come across a few times, and he usually draws like when we've had centre spreads, uh, he draws those. He draws the really, those really, like a, there's been a couple of ball games, haven't there? Puzzles. 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 Yeah, yeah, he draws those. And here he is drawing a strip, and it does not look like the other strips, does because the, Nothing like the panel structure is all different. He's, he's got big panels, small panels, each panel is really filled in. It looks sort of old-fashioned and ornate, doesn't it? There's lots going on, there's there jokes in the background of things. That's what I liked about these sort of comics, was when a lot was going on. At first, I wasn't sure what to make of it, and never having come across it before, but then after reading it a few times, I, I really, I suddenly realised how, how good this is. A character that just tests everything and annoys the hell out of everybody. 
I mean, at the start, he's going, his mother says to him, you're not sitting in here testing my kitchen equipment. Go into the garden out of harm's way, nag, nag, nag. But he's, what he's doing is he's putting a, a cheese grater into some contraption. He must have... Into, uh, into a meat grinder. Is that what it is? That's what it is, yeah, he's a mincer. So, so, so he's testing that in some way, apparently. <laughs> I hadn't spotted that. Yeah, I love that. And he's forced into the garden and then they don't want him in the garden. This is a bit like the, the Shiner episode earlier. But Shiner's in it, isn't he? Shiner turns up. Now, what's this? What's this concept? So this is when characters from Wiz, Wizard and Chips would make raids into each other's comics. That's what's going on. What a great idea. I love that idea. So Shiner turns up and immediately gets smacked in the eye with a trombone for his efforts. And gets a Shiner. He gets a Shiner, hence the name. Yeah. He does. Timothy Tester, <laughs> he decides to go in this music shop to test the musical instruments. So there's a panel where he's looking at the music shop why is there a very large dog in the middle of the panel saying grr? Seems uh, to have yeah. no, no purpose. It doesn't seem to do anything. And there's, well, there's another dog a bit later on, isn't there? There's Chase. Maybe he just likes drawing dogs. Yeah, that That's could be. It could be as simple as that. And why so. not? And you go to the music shop, has a sign outside saying mouth organs tuned, which I thought was quite nice. But I think I know why you like this, this script. Do you? Why I do, do I like because it? Because there's a panel over here and it has the sound effects clong, twang, Bling, plonk, and bullonk. I think that's bullionk. Bullionk. It bullionk. Is. Ah, yes, yeah. from the French bullionk family. Uh, another invented word. I love invented words, yeah. So that whole panel is nothing but odd words, like if it's not bullionk, it's plunk. <laughs> how, how many times have you heard me say that? <laughs> if it's not bullionk, it's, it's plunk. plunk. Yeah. Still it's, true, though, isn't it? Still that true. could be a byline for our podcast, kind of thing, <laughs> But uh, what I love about it is that he, he uses the harp to fire a load of rubber arrows at this policeman. What I love about it is that he does that and then you look at the harp and it's got a small label on it now which says, tested. Oh, it has. It has been tested. It has been tested by so Timothy that, Tester. Uh, that test has been carried out completely. Well done, Timothy. But this was a brilliant strip. I thought this was so great. And I yet, thought it was great. I have no memory of it at all. I've Absolutely no, not. Nothing of it. It's incredible, isn't it? Well done, Cliff Brown. As well as Timothy Tester, I think we should say. We love him. We so love th him. those are the strips we want to have. Is there anything else you wanted to speak of? Any other business? Let me just have a quick look through. For the benefit of the tape, I'm looking back through the comic. In the Crazy Gang, which we've looked at in our Crazy episode, which was quite crazy, ladies and gentlemen. That was a crazy episode. The main panel names all of the crazy gang except Freaky the Alien. You're right. You've got Cheeky, Brainy, Liz, Sporty, Blue and Ed. Freaky the Alien is not named. Does that mean that, what, we should ignore this alien that's zooming about? Well, Freaky doesn't speak Says in nothing. the entire comic either, does he? Says so. nothing at all. So are we meant to ignore this space alien that's hanging around the, the oh, crazy alien? Is it inferring that he doesn't exist, that it's an illusion? Is, is, he, is he on his way out? I think I think he needs to call his agent, doesn't he, really? <laughs> he, he's, he always lo he's sort of looming at the edge of things. <laughs> he's looming. And he's, he's usually partially out of the storyline. He's like going, it's it's, just like you're too that, freaky, freaky. Get yeah, out of the Wizard yeah. and Chips. They're casting him aside at this point, it feels like. It does feel like So poor freaky the alien, you know, well, we're not having that. i tell you what I loved about this. I really want, I want to put the word about crazy comic as well, because yeah, right. some of them go and talk to their parents. There's a rule in comics, isn't there, that you generally, not always, but generally, the parents of a character will look like the character. So we see Ed's dad... And Ed looks like a newspaper man. He looks like Ed. Ed is the editor. His dad is there reading a big newspaper. He's a big, fat old newspaper man. Fantastic. Sporty's dad. He's a big old boy. Sporty's dad, isn't he? He looks. He's gone a bit to see, but he's still quite muscly. And it looks like sort of great. Cheeky goes to see his mum. I've never seen Cheeky's mum before. No. And Cheeky's mum has big teeth like Cheeky. Exactly the same as Cheeky. But she has exactly the same hairstyle as Liz. <laughs> what are we to make of this uh, combination are Cheeky and Liz brother and sister that's my question to you if you know the answer get in touch and win a one pound postal order it's like Jeremy Kyle this isn't it yeah oh. we'll, be, we'll be putting uh, Cheeky's mum to the lie detector test later in the podcast if you're looking at this for a start the, the blooming premise is odd it, it, there's a big sign on the school and it says school tinfoil collection what, why, why are they collecting tinfoil what is the purpose of tinfoil maybe you know as a doctor 
maybe they run out of tin foil. I don't know. I well, don't why, know. What's the point of giving a load of tin foil didn't to blue, a school? Didn't Blue Peter collect tin foil at some point? But then oh, they collected caps from bottles or something. Yeah. Maybe it was obvious back in 1979. I don't and think it was, but it doesn't make any sense, doesn't it? Yes, but then again, you see, what, towards the end of this, when they've got, they, they amass a massive ball of tinfoil, <laughs> and then they meet the Brown Street Gang. And interesting, going back to your earlier point, the Brown Street Gang have equivalent characters for each of the crazy gang. Huh. One of them is a girl, that's how I spotted it. There's no freaky alien there. No alien. There. No, no alien, alien there. there. A, uh, oh, the freaky's being okay. shoved to the side. I'm telling you, I'm calling his agent myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What is it? 015, what was it? 01 8055. If Noel Edmonds is there, he's a powerful man. He could get yeah, in touch with the freaky. Yeah. So, I, I mean, this was an interesting... I mean, at the end, they win an old tin can that seems to be empty. I don't know why they're bothered. They win an old tin can? Some old tin can. They win... The, they, they say, we've won the tin cup. It looks pathetic to me. It was hardly worth the effort. But the other thing I wanted to speak to you about <laughs> was this centre spread. So in the centre of Wisdom Chips, there's a poster for a superstore. Yeah. So now I object to it, obviously, because this is in the centre of Chips, and Superstore is a Wizard storyline. Oh, right. So that's that's made me angry to start with. That's, that's not right. And I noticed it's called a Wizard and Chips poster, I thought you were calling this Wisdom Chips with Crazy. You've been quite specific about that on the letters page, guys, but apparently not. Not just Freaky, who's been uh, sidelined here. Yeah, and, oh. look, and, and look at what's going on here as well. Like, there's a there's a sign on it that says, Buy Now. I mean, that's, you know, that's trying to hypnotise you into going out and getting all this stuff. It's being held by a monkey playing a tambourine, so maybe it's hypnotising you to go and purchase a monkey playing a tambourine. I haven't done as yet, but let's see what happens next time. <laughs> but with Superstore it's like why would you want to post it this is like possibly the dullest strip I mean in Superstore what happens is yeah, it's no a shop choice. where they sell things it's not again I'm going to say this it looks lovely it's really nicely drawn lovely colours but what, why but what is the point of what this what's the point of this yeah you could have had Shiner you could have had Pongo Snodgrass anybody else you could, you could have had a Spotters book you could have a TV, TV book yeah. Spotters TV book yeah there's a couple of things I wanted to mention, right? So you know Sammy Shrink. I was looking at uh, up Sammy Shrink on the internet, and it said it, I, I thought that it said Sammy Shrink, a boy who can become marginally smaller. <laughs> it was actually magically smaller. I got that wrong. Oh, I that wouldn't have been very interesting, would it, if he was only marginally smaller? <laughs> That's the, the great character <laughs> Kenny Crouch. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sammy, the not that small shrink. I loved the Pongo Snodgrass page, by the way. Oh, it's brilliant, because Pongo Snodgrass, drawn by Ian Knox, who we've looked at before. We've looked at Pongo like... before, we love this character, but the idea of it is so great. He says, today I'm going to show you how to remove a stain from an old pullover. He says, all you do is cut carefully round it <laughs> and stick it in your stains album. That is a great That's joke. Great. What a... And at the end, the artist of the page has fainted because of all the smells. He's fainted onto his drawing board. So re a pre presumably, that's what Ian Knox looks like. Presumably, that's what Ian Knox looks I like. I love yeah. that. Really love that page. Yeah, he's great, isn't it? There's... So I think overall with this, I mean, there's a lot of good stuff in this, isn't Loads it? Loads of great yeah. stuff in it. Loads of great stuff in it. I, I remember when I used to buy it, I stopped buying this and got 2018 instead. So I always remember this as being like, kind of okay and all right. But then obviously, I guess, how old would I have been? Like, when it, whenever it merged with Star Lord, I stopped getting uh, Wizard and Chips and went over to 2018 and looked down disparagingly. Hold on, Wizard and Chips merged with Star Lord? No, Wizard and Chips didn't merge with <laughs> That would have been yeah. a, a, a merge I would have liked to have seen. That would have been amazing, <laughs> wouldn't it? Strontium Dog. <laughs> Strontium Dog and his crazy pals. I think they should do that. Because you know, like Rebellion, who owned 2018 and all this, own these as well. So you could quite easily combine the two. Well, every well, year, could. past few years, they've done like crossovers. I think last year they did a thing where they said, what if 2000 AD had merged with Battle and Action and all those? And they put all those characters in it. I think, uh, Rebellion, if you're listening, here's my pitch. What they should do is, well, what if 2000 AD itself had been merged into Whoopi and Buster? And then you have Judge Dredd and Strontium Dog and Road Busters and Halo Jones all of these comedy characters, I think that's that's a winner. Get Halo Jones drawn by like something like Redondo or something, it would be fantastic. Has anyone ever done a spoof Judge Dredd? 
Well, Whoopi comic did it once. Where they Sweeney did it, I remember this. Yeah. It was Sweeney Toddler as Judge Dredge. I remember that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's close to my heart because people call me Judge Dredge. They used to do that at school. But anyway, enough of this shitty shallying. Um, yeah, this was a great comic. Really and, enjoyed uh, it, yeah. It's quite hard to say, but what were your two favourite pages on this? Well, I, lo- I like Champ. I think I love Champ. Great. I think that's, that's definitely one of them for me. Much to my surprise, I, I really like that. And I love Timothy Test. I thought, I, that, was I thought great. that was excellent as well. But what did you not like, though? What did I not like? I mean, there's a couple I didn't like that we've, we've, we've glossed over. I mean, Happy Families is just bland city Arizona to me. It's, it's, it is bland city Arizona. It's just some families arguing and nothing particularly hilarious about it. And I also, I also as, speaking as an older person now, I don't, I find Joker a pain in the neck. He's a horrible child, isn't he, Joker? He just goes around causing problems for people and they're laughing about it. Yes, yeah, not amusing problems. No, just being just generally problems. ghastly and horrible. As a kid, I would have probably absolutely loved it. I, I think I'm going to go for Superstore as well, I don't like. It's dull as... Because it's waters, so dreary. And it's like, yeah. it's the, we're a shop. And every time I remember I'm reading this, they go like, they're a shop and they sell everything. And they get into all sorts of problems because they need a thing. You're like going, well, you sell everything. It's in the warehouse, isn't it? And they have a strange, bizarre obsession with monkeys as well. I don't know what that's about. <laughs> I think this is probably the same thing. Is he probably just likes drawing monkeys? He probably that's does. Horrible. He probably does. We will. Um, what should we do? Get rid of Superstore if we can. I think Superstore's the one. It's there, but Cons- uh, consign it to the dumper. Uh, send it into bankruptcy. It would be bought out by a venture. By Mike Reed. <laughs> <laughs> that's probably what happened. Yeah, yeah. I could, that's why I know I'm remembering it now. I hear Swap Shop's going out of business. I'll give them a ring. Oh one eight one eight oh five five. We're giving a lot of plugs to Swap Shop today, aren't we? And, uh, I, I hope nobody's still got that number. I found it. They're, they're all out. <laughs> I think it must have been early closing. <laughs> but overall, Wisdom Chips with Crazy. Maybe that was why we we, we liked it more. Could be a bit of an injection we, of that. Yeah. We felt but uh, yeah I, I thought it was really nice I, I, I generally agree. speaking very good full of fun full of silliness lots of great characters good old wizard and chips eh well with crazy comic thank you for that oh, sorry. well all that remains I believe is me to give you uh, next week's comic oh what's that next week uh, we're going to be looking at dandy comic from 1981 good heavens wow look at that I look forward to reading that thank uh, you and I hope you will look forward to listening to it that was good wasn't it that sounded really good no it didn't <laughs> <laughs> I'm only joking of course it did of course it did you're a doctor after all I'm merely a squadron, squadron leader. leader yeah so thanks very much for listening and uh, we'll see you next time goodbye